Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to actually look at this again, the Lord's Second Coming. This um, this is from Doctrines of the Gospel Student Manual, okay, on the church website. We had gone through section B, which talked about the different appearances before the Second Coming, right? And then we were going to look at section C, which talked about his final appearance, and it had a bunch of uh, details about that. But that, that, that was going to be the video I was going to do today. But I got an email from Kim Osborne, and she says, Hi, Jared. I don't know if you've seen the back inside cover of the tw April 2021 Leahona. The church explicitly states the four visits of Christ uh, that are still to come in the scriptural references. I'll try and attach a picture for you. Thanks again for all your uh, for all your hard work in sharing the message of the second coming. And then she shared this picture. Okay. So April 2021, um, it shows right here that it has like, okay, so it has his appearances from uh, the time of his mortal ministry, right? And then it has the different appearances to Joseph Smith. And then it has the time that he came to the Salt Lake Temple, um, to Lorenzo Snow. Everybody knows that story. September 2nd, 1898. And then it has the future appearances, right? And one thing that I was trying to determine is the order. I already kind of knew the order. You know, we've talked about it before, but I wanted to like really nail it down. And, um, in this, it made it seem like uh, coming to Adam on Yaman in New Jerusalem may have been the same event. Although now I'm seeing right here at the top of the section, it does have it in four. One, two, three, four. I was reading down here where it just had quotes that corresponded with that top section. Anyway, okay, well, that would have helped if I would have read that first. <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking, oh, it sounds like it's uh, three, you know. Adam on Yaman slash New Jerusalem, and then to the Jews in Jerusalem, and then after that to the whole world. But anyway, uh, so Kim found this, and then I have, I pulled this up on the church website. I'll put the link for it in the description below in case you want to check it out. And so I wanted to look at the scriptures that went along with this, because you'll see that each one has um, at least one scripture to describe that event. Right. So I want to go through the scriptures really quick. And then I want to talk ab about a bunch of other things because we're going to get back into this concept of um, New Jerusalem being a refuge. Right. Uh, it's going to be good. I've already kind of covered it before, but it's it's good. OK, so first, uh, referring to Adam on uh, it directs us to DNC section 27 and then 116. So I have those pulled up. Okay, 27 verses 5 through uh, 14. Okay, this is Adam and Yaman. Behold, this is wisdom in me, wherefore marvel not, for the hour cometh that I will drink of the fruit of the vine with you on the earth, and with Moroni, whom I have sent unto you to reveal the Book of Mormon, containing the fullness of my everlasting gospel, to whom I have committed the keys of the record of the stick, of Ephraim. And I think this is in reference when it's talking about drinking from the fruit of the vine, how Adam and Naomi is supposed to um, include a sacrament meeting, essentially. So anyway, verse six, and also with Elias, to whom I have committed the keys of bringing to pass the restoration of all things spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began concerning the last days. And also John, the son of Zacharias with uh, which Zacharias, he, Elias, visited and gave promise that he should have a son, and his name should be John, and he should um, be filled with the spirit of Elias, which John I have sent unto you, my servants, Joseph Smith Jr. and Oliver Cowdery, to ordain you unto the first priesthood which you have received, that you might be called and ordained even as Aaron. And also Elijah uh, unto whom I have committed the keys of the power of turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, that the whole earth may be may not be smitten with a curse. And also with Joseph and Jacob and Isaac and Abraham, your fathers, by whom the promises remain. And also with Michael or Adam, the father of all, the prince of all, the ancient of days. And also with Peter and James and John, whom I 
I have sent unto you, but whom I have ordained you, uh, but by by whom I have ordained you and confirmed you to be apostles and special witnesses of my name, and bear the keys of your ministry and of the same things which I revealed unto them. Unto whom I have committed the keys of the kingdom and a dispensation of the gospel for the last times and for the fullness of times in which I will gather together in one all things, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, and also with all those whom my Father uh, hath given me out of the world. All right? So that's the scripture that goes along with uh, that. Oh, yeah. Then there's this other one, one sixteen one. Section 116 only has one verse, and <coughs> excuse me, it says, Spring Hill is named by the Lord Adam on Diamond because, said he, it is the place where Adam shall come to visit his people, or the Ancient of Days shall sit, as spoken by Daniel the prophet. Okay, so that's the first appearance. Um, then the next one that it has, and it looks like these are in order, uh, they're in the same order that they show up in the the church manual. The next one is those in New Jerusalem in America. And um, it takes you to DNC 4566 through 67. Okay. Here we go. It says, and it shall, it shall be called the New Jerusalem, a land of peace, a, a city of refuge, a place of safety for the saints of the Most High God. And the glory of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord also shall be there, insomuch that the wicked will not come unto it, and it shall be called Zion. Now, before I go on and read the other scriptures, um, this comes up pretty frequently. Um, I'm not going to say who said this, and in fact, I'm, after this, after I read this, I'm going to delete the comment because I don't want anyone going back and seeing who it was, because this isn't meant to be like an attack on this person that left this comment. But I want to I want to show something, and it goes in line, it, it's in line with what we just read. This whole idea of um, New Jerusalem, I, there's just like this, there's this like school of thought that like I said in the last video, that the entire church is going to be gathered there. At least the righteous in the church are going to be gathered there. It's going to be like a huge city. It's going to be um, a place of physical safety against the wars that are raging in the world. Okay. Um, I understand there's, there's different people out there that have that interpretation. That's fine. But I'm going to show you why I don't accept that. Now, this person says... Hey, Jared, I really like seeing the signs of the times that you share, but when when I hear your views on the New Jerusalem, they don't seem to mesh with the 10th article of faith with the literal gathering of Israel to Jackson County. Also, DNC 101, 17, and 18. And then he puts those verses here. Uh, Zion shall not be moved out of her place, notwithstanding her children are scattered. The, they that remain and are pure in heart shall return and come to their inheritances, they and their children, with songs of everlasting joy to build up the waste places of Zion. Okay. Well, and then let me finish off the comment. Um, I don't have the quote at this moment, but Ephraim is to inherit the center place. Uh, one more thing. I know that it is not canonized, but the white horse prophecy seems to give the reason for fleeing to Jackson County. Uh, it kind of brings both sides of this top topic together a bit. Okay, so let me let me deconstruct this. Okay, <clears throat> um, nothing that I I said that I've ever said about New Jerusalem. And, and again, I have an entire playlist. Okay, I have an entire playlist right here. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. Um, I've given this a lot of thought, but it's not about me thinking or uh, reasoning. It's me researching and finding what has been said on the topic, both in the scriptures, but also by the prophets, apostles, and general authorities, okay? I have uh, videos, not a few. I have uh, 56 videos so far that are in this playlist. All right, so <clears throat> let's go back here. So Zion shall not be moved out of her place, notwithstanding her children are scattered. Correct, yes. Um, as you know, I believe that New Jerusalem is it's intended to be built in Jackson County, Missouri. 
There's another group that thinks that it's been moved to Salt Lake City, and I'm not of that opinion. Uh, the reason why is is not because of thinking. It's not because of me trying to reason. It's because, I, it's because I've researched it and I've looked at what has actually been said by those that would know, those that are in authority, right? If you go to topics A through Z on my spreadsheet, I have an entire section right here under uh, row seven that talks about uh, the fact that that Jackson County, Missouri is the center place and it has not been moved. Right now, if you go to the church website, let me zoom in. Okay. The most current information that confirms this is the uh, gospel topics portion of the church website. Okay. This is up to date. This is right now. And it says the new Jerusalem, which will be built in Jackson County, Missouri. Da, 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 da. It talks about the different ways that Zion is used. And this is one of them. The new Jerusalem, which will be built in Jack Jackson County, Missouri. If you go to um, the Gospel Principles Manual, it teaches that in the state of Missouri, uh, in the United States, that's where it's going to be built. Right here, New Jerusalem. Uh, President Nelson has said it. Okay, th but this is back in 1974. But he says, <clears throat> Our duty is to raise up a generation of men and women worthy to receive the coming of the Lord. For he will come to Jackson County, Missouri, to be sustained as King of Kings. So, <clears throat> I'm not sure what you mean when you say that I don't accept that. I, I, I just, I don't understand it. Um, verse 18, they that remain and are pure in heart shall return and come to their inheritances. They and their children with songs and everlasting to build up the waste places of Zion. So, I, I again, I don't understand why you see a contradiction with what I've said before. Because again, it's not so much what I say; it's what they say, right here, right here. Okay. Um, let me go. In fact, let me go over here to the common misconceptions spreadsheet, and this is where I get this idea. OK, let's go to what President Nelson said, April 2020. OK, it, you, you have to make the uh, distinction. This is not me. This is President Nelson. OK, he says here. The place for gathering for Brazilian saints is in Brazil. The place for gathering for Nigerian saints is in Nigeria. The place of gathering for Korean saints is in Korea. Zion is the pure in heart. It is wherever righteous saints are. Spiritual security will always depend on how one lives, not where one lives. So I just, I don't really, and then there's, you know, these three other things. I'm not going to read all of these, okay? But we got uh, Russell M. Nelson, Bruce R. McConkey, Graham Doxey, okay? In an in a article that was published in the Ensign um, that goes over these Missouri myths. So, Yes, uh, it is going to be built in Jackson County. It is still the center place, and you can't find anything that suggests otherwise. Okay, now <clears throat> let's talk about this white horse thing here, because this is always something that just always comes up. Always comes up, the white horse, the red horse, you know, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> let me show you what that's about, okay? So... This comes from Revelation 6. Okay, let me just read the two verses. And I saw, uh, sorry, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And then the second seal, you have the red horse. And then the third seal, you have uh, the black horse. And then uh, the fourth seal, you have the pale horse. Right? Right. Okay. What what do we know as Latter-day Latter Saints about these seals? What, what do we know? Well, let's first go to Doctrine and Covenants, 77, verse 7. Question. 
What are we to understand by the seven seals uh, with which it was sealed? Answer, we are to understand that the first seal contains the things of the first thousand years and the second also of the second thousand years and so on until the seventh. Okay, so that's something that's unique uh, to us, right? So what does that tell you about the white horse, the black horse, the red horse, the pale horse? It means that they're associated with thousand year periods. The white horse was the first, so that was the first thousand years, right? And if you go to the Institute Manual for the New, the New Testament, it does a breakdown. Here's like a little table. So the first seal, about 4,000 to 3,000 BC, white horse. Okay. The second seal, 3,000 to 2,000 BC, red horse. So <clears throat> the white horse has nothing to do with the last days. It has nothing to do with the second coming. It's come and gone. It's over with. It's done. Right? Now, in regards to... Um, you said here, uh, anonymous, you know, it doesn't seem to mesh with the 10th article of faith and also this scripture. Well, again, and like you said, it doesn't seem. So that's according to your understanding, right? And of course, we should study the scriptures. Of course, we should. Of course, we should. And we, tr we should try to understand them the best that we can. But the thing about it is that you may can you may come to different interpretations about what that scripture says. Just look at the community of Christ. Okay? The community of Christ uh, before they were the community of Christ, they were called the RLDS, Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They had the Bible, they had the Book of Mormon, they had the Doctrine and Covenants. Uh, I'm not sure if they ever accepted the Pearl of Great Price. I don't know about that. But they had those things, and so you you'd be like, oh yeah, look, it's in the scriptures, it's in the scriptures. Well, they came to a different interpretation, and then you have this other church, the Church of Christ Temple Lot, the ones that own the the Temple Lot. Uh, they have those same scriptures too, but guess what? They have different interpretations, and within our own church, there's people that come up with different interpretations. So I'm not trying to discount the scriptures at all. The scriptures are correct. But our interpretations or the way that we try and piece it together in our minds uh, probably aren't. So how do we fix that problem? How do we make sure that we have the right interpretation? Well, when it comes to definitely when it comes to prophecy, things that affect the entire world, that's not our domain, you and me. That's under the domain. That's under the authority of the prophet. He's the one. He's the prophet. He interprets scriptures and prophecies. OK, if he knows what the agenda is and what's supposed to happen next, if there's anybody, it's going to be him. So the difference between your approach and I'm not just saying just you, there's many, many that are like you that will like read the scriptures, apply your own interpretations or your best understanding, your best understanding of the scriptures and then just run with it and just run with it. There's so many people that do that. But this is my approach. Look what I do. I read the scripture and then I'm like, hmm, it sounds like this. Am I right? It, so instead of me just going like, oh, OK, I'm right. This is how it is. I read it clearly. I perfectly understand it. I go and I search what apostles or sorry, the prophet, apostles, general authorities say about that scripture, because I'm willing to bet that they have a better understanding than I do. You know why? It's because I believe that they literally are prophets, seers, revelators, and that they have association with Christ. And that they're, they're, more things are revealed to them concerning worldwide events and the church. So when we look at these scriptures, okay, specifically the one that we just read, um, let me read it one more time. DNC 45, this has to do with the New Jerusalem. And it should be called the New Jerusalem, a land of peace, a city of refuge, a place of safety for the saints of the Most High God, and the glory 
of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord also shall be there, insomuch the wicked will not come unto it, and it shall be called Zion. So what happens here is when you read this, you're like, oh, it's clear. It's clear. Uh, the wicked will not uh, cross over the city limits. Okay, uh, It's going to be a place of safety, so there's going to be war happening all over the place, but not there. Uh, it's, there's going to be, that must be because, um, you know, because of the power of God or the glory, or maybe because of technological uh, defenses that have been set up from technology that we received th from the 10 lost tribes who have far, you know, it, it uh, gone further than us in technology and they've brought their rich treasures to Zion. So it must be that we're going to have laser turrets and stuff that are keeping the evil people away. Okay, so that that's your approach. That's your approach. Okay, but what I do and what I think everyone should do is be like, okay, huh? So what is this really saying? Well, first, the best thing to do is to look at the footnotes. Okay, look at the footnotes, see where that takes you, and a lot of times that will clear a lot of things up. But you can do more. You can do more than that. You can go to the church website. <coughs> you can look it up. Um, another really powerful tool that I use all the time, and it's one of the best things ever created, um, is the Scripture Citation Index by BYU. And there's other, like, I think there's other similar tools out there. I mean, you have the internet. You know, you can always, like, just do Google searches or whatever your preferred browser is. But let's use the Scripture Citation Index, and let's see what has been said about these scriptures by prophets and apostles. Okay, so this is in chronological order. I have four. So the first one is from George Q. Cannon. This is in the Journal of Discourses. The date is October 8th, 1882. So at this point, the saints are in Utah, right? They, they've been there since uh, 19, or sorry, 1847. Okay, so we're, we're in Utah. Utah, okay, Utah. Let's see what he says. Let's go down to the citation. It's right here in the middle of this um, part that I have highlighted. He says, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there is this that is most extraordinary connected with us as a people. God in the beginning made a promise to us, which has been oft repeated, that notwithstanding all our enemies should do against us, we should have peace. Peace should reign in our hearts and in our habitations. Peace should be in our land and brood over us as a people. This is one of the great promises God made to us in the beginning. Reading the closing verses of the 45th section of the Doctrine and Covenants and see what God has said concerning Zion in the promises that are therein embodied respecting us as a people. And then he, he references, um, well, he references the scripture that we read a couple times here and then down here. That when other nations should be at war, when neighbor should rise against neighbor, when every man that will not take his sword against his neighbor must needs flee to Zion for safety, in Zion there should be peace. Okay, so he's referenced it two times. He's cited D&C 66 and 67 two times right here in Utah. Now, as I have said, it is one of the most extraordinary features connected with this work of our God, that when it seemed as though the whole power of the nation was combi was combining from every part of the land, um, execrations, what, execrations loading the air against the Mormons of Utah territory, petitions coming up by thousands, popular prejudice appealing to popular prejudice and entreating us the use of bayonets, of cannon, and musketry to destroy us, and when it seemed as though Congress was in such a mood that it was ready to pass any law or to frame any enactment to accomplish those ends, that in the midst of all the unreasoning excitement in Utah Territory, it was the breasts of the Latter-day Saints, wherever they, <laughs> they dwelt, <coughs> in these mountain in these mountain fastnesses, fastnesses, or scattered um, abroad among the nations of the earth, there was a spirit of unfailing peace, a spirit of quietude, a spirit of serenity, a spirit of calm and undismayed resignation, awaiting quietly and patiently the good 
providence of our God, knowing that in and of themselves, they were helpless to defend themselves against these attacks, but having unshaken confidence in the promises which God made to his people. So as uh, George Q. Cannon is citing this very scripture, it doesn't seem that he's using it in reference to the fortress city that um, that some people believe is going to uh, come into fruition. That He's talking about, at that time, being a part of the church, primarily in Utah, but also throughout the world, right? And having peace, although you had these very real political as well as... Um, you know, uh, violent attacks uh, against the saints. Right? Okay, so that's one, you know, because we don't just stop there. We you, To get the best idea of what a scripture is saying, you want to find as many different sources as you possibly can. Okay, you don't just go off of one person. Um, you can, you can like, you can, if one person said something, you can like keep that in mind, but it, whatever that person says is given more validity if it's repeated by other general authorities, right? Okay, so uh, with, with the exception of Joseph Smith, he's kind of like what he said. He, you know, he was the the dispensation head of this dispensation. Okay, now we're on to John Taylor. Okay, President John Taylor, February eleventh, eighteen eighty three. So this is what, just a year later, right? Yeah, this one was 1882 by President George Q. Cannon. And now the next year, John Taylor, he says, It has given me great pleasure lately in traveling among the saints to witness the spirit and feeling of this kind, which has been abundantly developed in the part in the different parts of the territory that we have had the pleasure of visiting. And it is a matter of considerable importance to us as a people that we comprehend the position that we occupy in the world and the various duties and responsibilities that devolve upon us. There are various theories, notions, and ideas abroad in the world pertaining to the future. We ourselves have been gathered from the nations of the earth under the influence of the new and everlasting covenant and under the guidance and dictation of God, our Heavenly Father. And we call this Zion, and we call ourselves the people of Zion, or in other words, the saints of the Most High God. And then he references the scripture that, about Zion being a refuge. We really make very great pretensions. <clears throat> to, be a, to be a saint signifies to be holy, to be pure, to be upright, and to be virtuous. Okay? So as he references that scripture, he's talking about Utah and being here and being gathered in, right? But there's more. There's more. It doesn't just end there. We have Harold B. Lee <coughs> in um, October General Conference, 1945, Our Responsibility Before God and Men. I've read this before in a previous video. Okay, so this first one says, The Lord spoke of our day of terrible conflict as a day when the whole world would seem to be in commotion, but he counseled his people. And then and then he reads the scripture. And by the way, this is as World War II. Um, again, when did it end? Let's see. When did World War II end? Uh, September 2nd, 1945. So uh, World War II had just ended as he's saying this. Okay. And then he reads this scripture. Wherefore, stand ye in holy places, and be not moved until the day of the Lord come. For behold, it cometh quickly, saith the Lord. And then he comforted his people with these words. And now he reads DNC 4567, which is our verse. And the glory of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord shall also be there, insomuch that the wicked will not come unto it, and it shall be called Zion. Okay, so again... He's not he's not talking about this uh, in the future sense of a future fortress city. He's not. He's talking about the very real world war, right? That w that was fought um, for you know it was caused by wicked men, um, and yet the saints were generally speaking safe. Okay, 
especially the the headquarters of the church for the, except for those that went to war but like the you know the the church continued on and um it remains to this day okay now in 1948 it's also Harold B Lee this is the April uh general conference of that year and he says and this is probably one of the most explicit things okay refuge from the storm Again, in 1838, the Lord gave a further reason for the gathering. Verily I say unto you, arise and shine forth, that thy light may be a standard for the nations. And that the, gather, that the gathering upon the land of Zion and upon her stakes may be for defense and for a refuge from the storm and from wrath when it shall be poured out without mixture upon the whole earth. Why was this to be called a quote-unquote place of refuge and a quote-unquote place of safety? According to DNC 4566, uh, our scripture that we're looking into, said the Lord in another revelation, okay, the next verse, the glory of the Lord shall be there and the terror of the Lord also shall be there insomuch that the wicked will not come unto it and it shall be called Zion. The time when these things should be should be would be as the Lord said, when the wicked shall slay the wicked, and fear shall come upon every man, and the saints also shall hardly escape. Nevertheless, I, the Lord, am with them, and will come down in heaven from the presence of my Father, and consume the wicked from the unquenchable fire. Uh, uh, and a further reason for the gathering is given us with this revelation. Wherefore, I, wherefore, seeing that I, the Lord, have decreed all these things upon the face of the earth, I will that my saints should be assembled upon the land of Zion, and that every man should take the right, should take righteousness in his hands, and faithfulness upon his loins, and lift a warning voice unto the inhabitants of the earth, and declare both uh, by word and by flight that desolation shall come upon the wicked. Okay, now here it is, right here. As we sit here today, in 1948. We should be mindful of the fact that we are those whom these revelations have spoken. We are those who have been gathered out from spiritual Babylon, or perhaps we represent the second or third or even fourth or fifth generation of those who heeded the call and felt the spirit of gathering. Just as was the case in the days of the prophet Joseph Smith, so in our day the leaders of the church have told us that Satan has been lying in wait to deceive and seeking whom he might devour. So, um, okay, that's what these scriptures mean. That's what these scriptures mean. They do not mean according to what we've read. And I've never heard anybody say otherwise. I've never seen anybody say that there's going to be, that those scriptures are referring to a physical defense it's referring to just the New Jerusalem, the center place in Jackson County, Missouri. It's talking about church-wide, right? We read in the, in the previous video um, from Joseph Fielding Smith that when we're talking about New Jerusalem, you can apply that to the entire church, right? There is going to be a literal center place. There will be. But when it comes to prophecies and stuff, it's applied to the whole church and to the stakes of Zion. So we're called to gather to the stakes of Zion, not to Jackson County, Missouri. And that's not going to happen according to what we, we've researched and no one has ever said otherwise. Okay, that's where we find spiritual refuge and protection and sometimes physical protection as well. Okay, but both spiritual and physical. And uh, that's where you're called to be. You're where you are from. That is your place. Brazil, Korea, Nigeria, United States, whatever. Okay. It's it's really not that difficult to understand. And I'm, I'm not trying to like talk down to you, but there's people that, again, the the narrowly, narrowly, narrowly focus on specific scriptures and they put together this um, essentially story in their minds. And um, and then a lot of times, like uh, whenever they do look outside of those particular scriptures, they'll go all the way back to the Journal of Discourses um, and pick out, they'll pick out the portions um, 
that like the very early understandings of certain things like the 10 lost tribes and stuff like that and just stick with that despite the fact that much more has been said since that time that despite the fact that the understanding of revelations and the church continue to progress and unfold over time and what i'm referring to specifically with that is i have a timeline called 10 lost tribes let me because this has been like an ongoing thing on my channel for a long time i have this color coded by statements made by general authorities are in red if they disagree that there's 10 lost tribes hidden in a secret location a main body that's hidden okay that's red and then green you go all the way back the most recent one that, that i have on my tracker is 1952 and it's by joseph fielding smith and i have it in light green okay so if it's red if it's light red then it, it's not explicitly saying that there's not 10 lost tribes but they're talking about something in such a way that um, th they're going against the idea right whereas with bruce r mcconkey and um reuben v Aliad of the 70 and brad wilcox the second counselor in the young men general presidency they outright say that there is not um a, a group but you have to go pretty far back to find your first uh, dark green the most recent dark green was from 1921 orson f whitney quorum of the 12. okay so why why is there a discrepancy is it because uh the further back you go the more authentic it is as some people have said i don't think so i don't i don't accept that at all i don't think that things get watered down or um revelation is lost over time what i think happens according to scripture is that we receive line upon line precept upon precept and the the restoration is ongoing and it's a continual process and it has been since the beginning of time the most recent statements are the most accurate because additional revelation has been received so in the early days okay they were doing the best that they could right they were doing the best that they could but at some point um revelation or inspiration was received and it changed and you don't see any recent statements that support that idea anymore you don't so um <clears throat> so hopefully that 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 answers it when you say it doesn't seem uh to match up with the 10th article of faith and whatever well that's according to you that's according to you in the way that you read it okay and i don't trust so much the way that i read it i do read it i think about it but then i look to see what our church leaders have said the ones that would actually be very concerned about this because it involves them because they are leading the church and because they receive inspiration and revelation for the church right um <clears throat> furthermore I liked this comment. This is from Adventures of Matt in Bean. Um, I guess it's Bean that's writing this. I don't know because she's the one that's in the profile picture. Uh, but it seems that Bean says, or Bean says, uh, isn't it funny how when Christ first came, people were looking for a political slash freedom savior, and today there also seem to be many who are looking to run to Zion for f to be physically safe, saved from the political wars which are expected while i think some physical protection may be provided to the saints i think christ's first mission remains to give us spiritual refuge and freedom not political and i would agree i'm not trying to and look anonymous over here i'm not saying that that's how you view it but i do think that there are a lot of people with this kind of interpretation that that they're they think that way they're looking for physical things. They're looking for spectacular things. You know, there, there's a couple of people, people out there in specific that, you know, they push content, they create content or, you know, books or videos or whatever that really um, get really animated and excited about 
the spectacular, um, the miraculous, like they want those like supernatural things. Like they're just like, they're craving the supernatural. Right. And certainly that does happen sometimes it does, but it, it, I'm, we're pointing to the state of mind. You don't want to be somebody that, you know, you're looking for spectacular and amazing. Okay. Because that's called missing the mark because that's what the Jews did. They were looking for supernatural. They were looking for, um, uh, what would you call it? Like practical, something that would, uh, affect them in the here and now, like, Oh, come and save us from these Romans, you know, instead of thinking about the purpose of Messiah, um, his true purpose, his spiritual purpose to save us from sin. They wanted the spectacular. They wanted somebody that was going to drive the Romans and all other enemies out so they could finally just have, they could have peace and prosper and, you know, probably acquire material wealth. Right. And uh, we don't want to be that type of people. We don't want to be the type of people like the Jews that would read scriptures and think that they understood it so well when the prophets had already laid out what the scriptures meant. And that's one of the, the most incredible things about the Book of Mormon is when you read the Book of Mormon, this is an account of an Old Testament people who clearly understood what the Law of Moses was for. And they clearly understood that there was going to be a Jesus Christ. And that's what Messiah was going to be. He was going to come to um, provide uh, the atonement, right? So what that tells you is that you had Jews that trusted in their own learning. They trusted in their own strength, their own understanding. You know, they were just so good at the scriptures and they understood the scriptures just so good that when Christ came, they, they missed it. And with the second coming, it is going to be obvious. It's going to be obvious when he comes for the final appearance, but in the lead up to it, it's the same, the same stuff seems to be going on right now. Well, where people are looking for these like big, obvious supernatural things and you're going to miss it. Things are happening right now. And I think they're happening in ways that you don't expect and that aren't big and miraculous and supernatural. We've already covered so much on this channel of things that are happening right now that indicate that the second coming is very, very soon. But there's other people that are like, no, it cannot possibly be soon because we haven't even built the fortress city yet. You know, the Ten Lost Tribes haven't come from outer space in their spaceships to bring us their technology. You see the problem here. And, um, you know, it's probably not the most important thing in the world. The, mo the more important things is the gospel itself, like how you treat others and repentance and uh, charity and love and kindness. That That's what really, really matters. But if you're like, you have this like uh, fiction in your head of your own creation, you know, thinking that it's not going to happen for such a long time. Well, you might be uh, taken by surprise, right? Anyway, sorry, I'm just like going on this rant. Jeez, Jared, jeez. Um, so go check out my um, playlist called New Jerusalem, where I go over like everything that there is to go over. There was somebody recently that they're like, I think you're confusing uh, the temple complex with da da da. And no, <laughs> no, I'm not. You need to watch this playlist. We went into the Joseph Smith papers. There are names for the temples of the temple complex. It is a 24 temple complex. It's like the people that, like seriously, the people that, <sighs> there's people that do not do the appropriate amount of research. And then they, they speak so confidently. Okay or they just like watch one video and they're like, Oh, you don't know what you're talking about when it's like, no, no, you don't know what you're talking about. I provide all the sources, everything, everything that you could possibly want. 
Here's a picture of the temple complex right here. This is on the Joseph Smith papers. There were two plans. There was the first plat for the city, and there, then there was a revised plat. Each had a complex of 24 temples. And we've looked at uh, the diary of Alvin R. Dyer and how they created the Independence Visitor Center to be incorporated into that complex because it seems like that is still the plan. Okay. So, um, and then here's another one. I just wanted to point this out, this idea that um, there's going to be a gigantic continent-sized cube uh, that joins to the earth because people will read the book of Revelation and they'll, they'll figure out the measurements of how John the Revelator describes New Jerusalem. And so they come to this conclusion that there is going to be a continent-sized cube that's going to land on the earth and um, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, like, if, if you're a believer of that, like, do you think that, so it's going to land here, right? Is it just going to crush all the temples that we have made right now? You know, uh, me being in Kansas, am I never going to see the sky again? Because there's going to be this gigantic cube on top of uh, the entire Midwest. They like to speak symbolically when it comes to numbers and it's been like this for a long time you see it all through the throughout the bible numbers have spiritual meanings so when you read that there's going to be a cube that extends up into space you might want to think about oh okay now does that make sense for, first be like does that even make any sense you know, because then that kind of that could give you the indication. Hmm, maybe there, maybe that's not quite correct. Am I reading this right? Okay, but don't just go off of your understanding. Be like, okay, well that's what it says, and then research it. Research it. Uh, don't worry, I I've done the research, but you don't have to just trust me. Go to this video, and then go to the sources that I provide in the video. You don't even have to. You don't even have to watch the video. Just pull up this video go to the description box and then go to those websites and read for yourself. Okay. That's all you gotta do. You don't even have to listen to my voice. Just go to these websites and read. Okay. Um, so it's just, sorry. It's just like, um, I can't, I can't stand pictures like this. I just, I can't stand pictures like this. Um, Oh, yikes. I didn't think that the video was going to quite go like this. I don't mean to sound so hostile. I'm ap I am apologize if anyone's getting upset. I guarantee I'm going to get some upset comments. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, thank you, Bean. Or, or Matt. I don't know. Maybe it's Matt. Um, okay, so that's New Jerusalem. After that, uh, the Jews in Jerusalem... And uh, I have that pull. No, no, I don't. You know what? This is probably good enough. We're at 48 minutes. Um, so anyway, here. so here we have it. Okay, so now, now it's clarified for me. Definitely four appearances in this order. Adam on the Amen, New Jerusalem, Jews in Jerusalem, and then the whole world. Um. Is Adam on Diamon ongoing right now? Uh, it could be. I'm not going to repeat all that, but we talked about that in the last video. Those in the New Jerusalem, uh, is that what's happening in the temple right now with these changes? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It could be. All I know is people have said that there's uh, even more emphasis on Christ. And, uh, I mean, who knows? Who knows? There may be more going on there than what we realize. So all we can really do is just wait and see. And uh, I think that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later.